Hello friends, my name is Vas Solo. I'm a recovered drug addict and alcoholic and a certified meditation coach. And the big question is, how can people like you and I, who are in recovery from addiction, who want to be happy, joyous and free, what are the things that we need to do in order to be successful and to grow into who we are meant to become? That is the big question and the show will give you the answer. Today's video is about the soul's eternal longing. I understood pretty early on into my recovery from addiction, as I was working the steps, that the reason that I was restless, irritable, and discontent was because my whole life I had been searching for a spiritual experience or a connection to something bigger than myself. I had been looking in all sorts of different places for it, in relationships, in pursuits uh, of my goals, in money, in pleasure, you name it. And all of these things let me down. And all of it just ended up in me going deeper and deeper into my addiction because the, the void that I was trying to fill with all of these things, all of these accomplishments, could only be filled by that spiritual experience by a spiritual awakening coming to the understanding that what I was always looking for in all of those things was God. So I understood this pretty early on and I'm so happy that uh, the 12-step program was there to help facilitate this awakening. It's interesting how some people in this world, in fact a lot of people in this world, have no desire um, to, to know anything about the spiritual path, um, who look at people like you and I who are on it, and they, they make fun of us. They say, you know, you believe in fairy tales, you pray to something that's invisible, that's imaginary, and you only do it to make yourself feel better. But those of us who are on the spiritual path, we know that this isn't true because we've had true experience of this power and of this consciousness. I know that there was no way that I could have possibly stayed sober for longer than a couple of days had I not felt something that was better than what the drugs were giving me. Something that replaced it that was far more, far more valuable, far more irreplaceable. And so we know that once we feel this power and once we have that shift in consciousness, that this is in fact what we're looking for. And I think that Indian philosophy or the writings of their sages and saints really explain uh, our circumstance well. They say that we don't only live once inside this physical body after which we die and go either to hell or to heaven. They say that we reincarnate multiple times until we are liberated from all of our vast numbers of desires or karmas. And that these desires, these things that we think we want and that we think are going to make us happy, these are the things that pull the soul back into the body over and over and over again. This is just a very simplified version of, of this philosophy. And so according to that philosophy, you and I, we've been born many, many times and we've lived many, many lives in different bodies. And in our current incarnation, we we finally felt the soul's eternal longing for that awakening. And as I was speaking about it earlier, as I was explaining that, for me, that manifested as this dissatisfaction with anything that I tried to fill that void with, right? The money, the relationships, the accomplishments, all the various distractions that this world has to offer all these glittering quote-unquote treasures that we seek, that we think are going to give us that final moment where we go, ah, I finally found it. Well, we, we 
it seems that souls like you and I have been through this process so many times that we finally realize that it's not going to happen. And we become ready and primed for that awakening. And other souls in this world are not there yet. I heard it uh, explained this way. It's like we've, we've, this world is like an amusement park and we're, we're constantly going on the same rides over and over. And in the beginning, it's exciting and, and fun. But at a certain point, we just want to get off the ride. So when I meditate, for example, my consciousness, it, it elevates into a different plane. Right? It's not, like I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm seeing cool things or anything like that, but a great peace and calm settles within me and suddenly I can experience myself as more free. My thoughts are no longer constantly pulling me here and there. The mind is settled, the body is quiet, the breath is quiet, and I'm experiencing a more, a more deeper connection with something bigger than myself. And so it quenches that, that thirst, that, that longing that the soul has. That's why meditating is like, you know, taking a dip in, inside of a spiritual oasis where at the end of it, if I make the effort to do it, and I do, I come out of there and I feel refreshed and I'm looking at the world through a different set of eyes. But as I go back into the world and the mind starts to uh, question things and starts to become restless and you see the news and you know what I mean? You start to become more involved in the world again. So there's always this constant battle of, of bringing the mind back to God, of, of remembering why we're here, of reminding ourselves that no matter how successful we become, no matter um, if we find the love of our life, none of that in the end is going to bring us that eternal happiness that we are seeking or to satisfy our soul's eternal longing. So that's where I'm at on the spiritual path right now. I'm constantly trying to remind myself to go deeper and to hold on to that conscious contact with God so that um, the delusion that this world can bring me satisfaction begins to become weaker and weaker and weaker. I hope that uh, you found this video interesting. Share in the comments and let me know if you resonate with that, if you feel that same longing, and what do you do to satisfy it? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Joy to you.